Hey everyone, it's your boy Matt, and I'm back here with yet another deck matchup. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to make up for lost time, and uh, from the week, week and a half I've been gone. So, we have our third matchup of the day, and this one here is more meta. Uh, so two things are interesting about this one. This one is actually a, 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 like a pretty meta matchup. The second interesting thing is that I'm actually playing uh, my Dark Magician deck with... The pre-release, uh, like Dark Magician support. So uh, this profile right here is the one I'm playing, right? So I have the three Illusion of Chaos, three Prep, uh, Saravis, um, and, and a lot of you know one Apprentice Illusion, one Secrets of Dark Magic, like a lot of the stuff you've seen before, um, you know, in terms of support cards. But also, um, I, I think I've talked about this in my uh, other video. But anyway, so yeah, I'm playing this deck. So I, I did get a few people in my comments in my other matchup videos asking me to pull, show more replays where I play Dark Magician with the new support. So here we are. Um, I do that here. And in this case, I'm against a Brave Phantom Knights deck. So Phantom Knights is already like pretty meta, like pretty up there in terms of like power level in the current format. Um, we don't have the Brave stuff yet, which... Uh, I think when it releases, I don't know when it's going to release in the TCG, maybe in Battle of Chaos, but I think when it releases, it's going to be called like Adventure or something, or Adventurous, I don't know. But uh, we call it Brave for now, and uh, yeah, it's Brave Phantomites is very popular in the OCG. So uh, we go to three games here. Uh, let's see how it goes, starting with game one. Alright, so I forget who wins the die roll here, um, but I guess we'll, we'll find out based on who goes first. All right, so he goes first, so clearly he won the die roll. My opening hand is okay. Um, it has the capability of making Dragoon because Prep will grab Illusion of Chaos. Illusion of Chaos will grab me uh, Souls. Souls and two Soul Servants can easily get me into Dragoon, right? Uh, but, of course, I still have to deal with his board. So he's going to do a bunch of Phantom Knight stuff, which is summoning an infinite hordes of monsters. Uh, but he actually goes into, like, uh, the... Like the all this this right stuff, which is basically the brave token, right? So here's the brave token, um, and then he's gonna play Journey of Destiny. So if you don't know what the brave token is, it's a 2,000 attack, 2,000 defense like token. That's pretty good because it can it's defended by like a bunch of support stuff. Uh, so for example, this card. Hold on. So let me. So this card says. The first time your opponent equipped with an equip spell will be destroyed, is not destroyed. So this Brave Token is supposed to be equipped by some spells or something, and this card is supposed to search this Griffon Rider. Uh, this Griffon Rider says if you control no Brave Monsters or control, if you control no monsters or control Brave Token, you can special summon this. And when your opponent activates a, a card effect while you have a Brave Token, you can shuffle this card back and negate the activation. So it's basically a negate, and then this Brave Token can also be defended. So this card says. Um, if a monster is normal summoned, or special summon, you can take a, a, a one equip spell. With this brave token, add it to hand or equip it. Um, and then the first time a monster equipped with, I don't, know, it, I don't know the full like way it works. I just know that this token is strong because it has a bunch of support cards, including any gate, some equip spells, which will protect it from destruction. Uh, it's just, it's just really good. Anyway, so he's gonna summon that. So this is his end board. Um, I don't know what brave Phantom Knight's end board is supposed to look like. Um, part of me wonders if, like, he misplayed, because this looks like a fairly weak board. Cherubini does nothing by itself, uh, this has a negate, and then he has a call by the grave, which is, like, a second interruption. So, yeah, not a great opener. So, what do I have? Yeah, so I draw a Solemn Judgment, so you're going to see Prep is going to grab Illusion, Illusion is going to grab Souls. Souls is going to, uh, s you know, sum summon Dark Magician. The reason I go into Dark Magician here is instead of, like, Dark Magician Girl and then, like, going into um, Rod is because uh, this Griffin here is a negate, so I'm just going to run over him, right? Uh, or rather, I'm going to run over the token, because without the token, this card does nothing. Alright, so goodbye token, and now he has, like, no interruptions other than Call by the Grave. So, I'm going to stack Rod, draw one for Rod, grab Circle, Link Spider, Anaconda, and then he immediately surrenders. Yeah, he, he knows I'm going to go into Dragoon. And, you know, he like, there would be nothing he could do here. Like, I have Saravis just in case he has an Imperm. I have, you know, I'm going to have four interrupts. Like, Dragoon Negate, which will pop both of these cards. Uh, and then I'll have, you know, the Soul with Circle. 
judgment, etc. All right. So that was game one. So I won, even though I went second. Game two, uh, he chooses to go first. Um, what did I side in? Let's talk about side decks. So I side in uh, Dark Ruler No More, obviously. Really good card. I side in Evenly Matched, because why not? Uh, Phantom Knights tend to be a combination of front row and back row, so Evenly Matched is really good. Uh, what else do I side in? Um, I should... When I have Nibiru, I must not have sided in Nibiru. Nibiru is really good against Phantom Knights, but uh, I think the Brave token can, uh, is a Nibiru deterrent because uh, it, it's, it basically allows Phantom Knights to set up an early negate before their combo. So Phantom Knights are very, by themselves, are very vulnerable to Nibiru uh, because they don't get a negate until much later in their combo. But with the Brave token, they get a negate much earlier. So, yeah, I think I made it out on side in Nibiru because I know oh, he has a Brave token. Like, there's no point in Nibiru. But Dark Room No More and Evenly Match are great side deck options for going second here. So let's see what he does. So you can, just based on what his hand is, you could already tell this is not going to be good. Imperial Order is going to single-handedly win him the game because look at my hand. I have four spells, right? And if I don't draw Evenly Match, then Imperial Order is going to completely screw me. Combo. His combo is actually not that scary, honestly. Blah, 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 blah. <sighs> Bunch of stuff. Utopian Future Draco. Yep. Alright. So let's see how many interruptions he has. One interruption from Griffin. He has one interruption from Utopic Future. He has Imperial Order and Phantom Knight's Fog Blade. I knew he had Fog Blade. I think, I think he searched it or something. So he has three interruptions, not counting Imperial Order. With this hand, I could actually theoretically play again, against that. Because I have Dark Ruler No More. Dark Ruler No More literally like negates both his monsters, right? Like all his monster negates. So if I play Dark Ruler No More here, again, let's ignore Imperial Order. That's two interruptions I got rid of, and all I have to do is Fog Blade, and that's easy because I have Ref plus Hall by Grace. So I have a really good hand. Um, and in fact, when I draw here, I'm going to draw Prep, which is just going to make this hand even better. Like, But the problem is, <laughs> I Dark Ruler, and he has fucking Imperial Order. Yeah, this card absol absolu absolutely needs to get banned. This is just so broken. Like, look at it. This, like... Look at my hand and look at his board. If it was not for Imperial Order, his board would be done. Like, there's no way I, like, I would not be able to break his board here. Like, with the hand that I have, ignoring Imperial Order, like, I would easily be able to break everything else. But Imperial Order is just one of those cards where you have it, you just win, right? And uh, since I did not draw evenly matched, that's just what's going to happen, right? Um, so, yeah, I immediately surrender. Because I'm like, uh, I look at my hand, I'm like, yeah, I can't play through Imperial Order at all. Um... Like, what exactly did I do? I guess, best case, I ignore this. Like, I can't even use Salvation to set Eternal Soul. Like, uh, so I use, a, I summon a Princess Illusion Magician, and, and, I, and I, I kill Cherubini. That's about it, right? Like, there's nothing I can do here, right? Because of Imperial Order. Yeah, Imperial Order is just one of those cards that just makes every deck, like, uh, you know, that doesn't need spells, like, just win, right? This this card needs to be banned. I don't. I can't believe this card is not banned yet. But anyway, um, yep. So not very eventful, but just 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 in a bad vacuum. If you see my hand, if you see his board, ignoring Imperial Order, I I, I absolutely could have played through this, even though his board is stronger than it was in game one. All right. So let's go to game three. Game three. I forget if it's more interesting. I want to say it is. I go first. So I'm gonna get prep. Grab Saravis. Illusion of Chaos is gonna. Grab Souls. I'm going to send Dark Magician back into my deck. Souls is going to... What am I going to do here with Souls? I'm going to summon itself. I'm going to use Dark Magical Circle. I'm going to draw... I'm going to draw in a Summon Limit. So, when I used Dark Magical Circle, I saw that I had Summon Limit in the top three of my, my cards. And I'm like, you know what? Summon Limit is such a good card. I'm going to... I'm literally just going to throw, throw away Dark Magical Circle to just draw it. Cause it's just such a good card, like especially against Phantom Knights. I like Phantom Knights is a combo deck. They cannot play through Summon Limit unless they have back row removal, which uh, he doesn't in his hand. Did he even cite it? Let's see. Um, yeah, I don't see any back row removal here. So, oh, he has Droplets. Yeah, yeah, Droplets literally doesn't matter. Uh, Droll doesn't matter. 
Um, so yeah, I'm so I'm gonna try to put Eternal. I'm gonna try, so I actually sent Dark Magician to the graveyard here because um, I was planning on going into Circle in Eternal Soul, uh, and so I'm gonna try to stack Salvation here. But this idiot actually uses Ghost Spell against Servant. I'm like, you're actually you're actually some kind of like. Uh, like I, I don't know, your, your IQ must be like negative a billion if if you actually chain ghost spell to soul servants. Like all right, all right, like sure you wanna like I I don't care if you do this because I'm just gonna use soul servant to draw. And look, I drew salvation anyway. Like I knew salvation. Um. Wait, I did not know salvation was at the top of my deck because I my deck was shuffled. Wait, no, no, no. No, I did know salvation was at the top of my deck. Yeah. So why did I use soul servant? What was I gonna stack? Oh, I was gonna stack Rod. I remember. Yes. So, so I knew. Yeah. So cir cir Circle put Summon Limit Salvation on top of my deck, and I was planning to stack Rod. Yeah, that's what Soul Servant. I was gonna stack Rod, draw Rod, go into Dragoon, and then end a board with Dragoon Summon Limit, and then uh, terraforming at Secret Village. Like I grabbed Secret Village because like clearly, uh, I I you know the Brave uh, the Brave engine relies on spells, but also um, so Phantom Knight tradition doesn't run a lot of spells, but like. Uh, things that break my board include spell cards like Lightning Storm, uh, Dark Ruler No More, Forbidden Droplet. So I, so I already knew that like Secret Village is going to break. Oh man, I should have talked about side decking. Yeah, l l let's go into side decking here. Um, yeah, I put in Summon Limits because it's amazing. Uh, and I put in Secret Village package because uh, I knew it was going to stop his Brave Token engine. And also, uh, Secret Village is preemptively good against um, like board clear like Droplet, Dark Ruler No More, or Lightning Storm, etc. So... Anyway, um, so he so he stops it going to Dragoon, but it doesn't matter because I go into Turn Eternal Soul because I send Dark Magician. So I knew that I had Magical Salvation on top of my deck. So I thought, okay, just in case something happens and I cannot go into Rod, right? I'm just going to send Dark Magician into my, into my graveyard, right? So that way I have it for Eternal Soul. So sometimes, like, you know, you lose the plus two from Soul Servant, like... But sometimes you just want to play safe and just send Dark Magician Graveyard so you can then use Eternal Soul to bring it back, right? And then you have a play. Because, like, look look at this deck set up, right? Um, like, simplified game state. Uh, I'm just going to go Secret Village, Summon Limit, and I have Eternal Soul to bring Dark Magician. So he can't play spells, he can't summon more than two monsters, and uh, if he tries to beat over Magician Souls, I have Dark Magician. So, yeah, his... his, his like, he literally cannot play here. So watch what happens. Like, simplified game state, right? Secret Village and Summon Limit together are just so powerful. I feel like I almost always win games when I have these two. He's going to try to go into his combo. I'm going to immediately Summon Limit. Um, the reason I Summon Limit the, the, the hand activation is because I want... Uh, I want to make sure that he can't chain a third Summon. And I'm just going to make a uh, Dark Magician here. Yeah, so now I'm just sitting on a 25k beater, a uh, 2.5k beater, with Sun Limit Secret Village against a bunch of weak-ass weak, mo weak -ass monsters, right? It's like, oh, you have Fogblade? Good job. It's not, an, like, Fogblade cannot affect Dark Magician. So he's actually dumb enough to try to Fogblade my rod. I'm just going to Saravis here because, like, I'm not going into Dragoon anyway, Anaconda Dragoon anyway, so I might as well just use Saravis here, right? Just so I can get my search. And then I have Dark Magical Circle, right? And I just go into Link Spider. Like, yeah, so I have Dark Magician set up. I ended up drawing a Dark Magician, so I, I didn't even need to go Link Spider. But, yeah, this just gives me more options. It's, it's just really funny now. It's like, he literally can't do anything, right? He's completely floodgated into oblivion. No spells. No more than two summons, and I have a banish. So, yeah, this game is over. You don't even—I don't even need Dragoon to win. Yeah, he just—he uh, times out uh, because I think he just got salty and just like left the game without quitting, and then the timer just ran out. But like, yeah, what, what is he gonna do? There's nothing he can do. So, yeah, sometimes like if you just have Secret Village, Summon and Vanilla Dark Magician, you just win, right? You don't even need Dragoon. So, yep. Uh, so that was interesting. Um, yeah, Brave Token is going to become a big engine that everyone's going to play once it comes out. Uh, so yeah, there was that. There was a showcase, a deck matchup, um, showing uh, my, you know, my new Dark Magician deck that I'm going to be. So 
once the Dark Magician support comes out in February, so I have a case of uh, of um, uh, Battle of Chaos coming in um, that I pre-ordered, and I'm, I'll I'll do a I'll probably do a de uh, an opening on my on my on my channel. Um, but yeah, uh, I did sign up to to attend YCS Vegas, and I w do intend on playing uh, Dark Magician my deck with the new support cards. I want to see how 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 the new support card cards fare against. Uh, you know, just like the meta and like all the new stuff that's coming, that's been going out. So, yeah. Anyway, um, thank y'all for watching, and hope y'all you enjoyed or learned something. All right, see ya.